Good morning, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and today is uh, Tuesday, December 13th and a, a viewer of uh, our videos asked the other day if we could do a piece on uh, less expensive porcelains, things that could be bought in the market that aren't going to cost you a fortune. So we thought, well, where do you draw the line? So we thought every, everything under $500. Let's see what we can find that sold for $500 in the last few months on the internet, on eBay, things that we know are okay, that are authentic, and to see what we came up with. And, and the list is kind of interesting. I was uh, pleasantly surprised, actually. So let's take a look at it and see what uh, we can come up with, all right? And we're going to start first, we have, we've done it sort of in, uh, by dollar volume, the lower number first, and then working our way upward. And the first thing we came up with was this. A rather nice um, uh, late Song to early Yuan period, uh, dark brown, they call these black draft signs, they're really dark brown glaze, uh, Jarlet. It was around two and a half, three inches tall, and uh, it sold very reasonably. It went for uh, $45, so there's something you could have bought if you like earlier pieces. And if we click up here and go here, this was a nice mid-18th century Famille Rose export plate with a vase, a turquoise vase in the center with flowers coming out of it. It's probably made around, oh, I don't know, 1750 to 1770, somewhere in there. And it went for $65. It had a tiny hairline on the rim, but if you can live with that, it's a heck of a good buy. And then we'll go here. Nice little Yixing uh, teapot. Uh, sold with stamping all over it. It's a circa 1900 pot, but a nice example. And it went for about $150, okay? Just re fairly recently, actually. And then we have this. This is a, a rather nice, this is a seller in the Netherlands that we keep track of. A rather nice Kang Shi or, uh, or so a dish, probably is Kang Shi by the looks of it. It was around seven or eight inches in diameter. And it went for uh, uh, 98 bucks. All right, $98 for a Kung Shi plate. So how's that? All right, and these are all stuff we feature in the newsletter every week. So if you're not getting the newsletter, you're probably missing them. Um, and this, very nice little Famille Rose uh, export uh, teapot. It was around, um, you know, four or five inches tall, butterflies and, and birds on it. Very pretty, nice shape, well-shaped handle, a nice lid on it, and a little bit of tiny bit of wear in the gilding up here. But overall, a nice piece. It has a vent hole here in the handle. That's not damaged. That's where they put the vent holes. And it went for $98. So how's that? Pretty good buy. Very pretty and uh, reasonably priced. All right. One of the things that we've noticed lately, I want to mention this, is that some sellers get a little nervous when they have stuff on the web. And uh, if they don't sell or get bids right away, they've been some of them have been pulling them off. So if you see something you like, put a bid on it right away so the, the seller knows that there's interest. Don't dance around the thing. You may come back on the closing day and uh, the, the seller may yank it, all right? And then we had these three pieces. This was a seller in the Netherlands that we follow. Uh, nice lot. Uh, some of them had minor imperfections and whatnot, but all three of them sold as a group. for th uh, It was $125, and they range in size anywhere from this was around, I think, around four inches tall, and these are, you know, six or eight inches tall, all right? And then you had this, this rather nice uh, hot food pot. It's a late 19th century blue and white example. Um, nicely done. Uh, and it was it sold for about 150 bucks. All right. And then you had this. This is a real Kung Shi bowl, okay? This is a nice Kung Shi Famille Vert bowl. Uh, it's got some fritting on the edge. It's got a hairline here. It does have a line in it. But it only went for $151. So if you're not in a position to shell out, you know, 1000 or, or 1500 for one of these, this is a good example. It's got overglazed blue enamel, which is fairly desirable on these, a nice aubergine, and uh, something to uh, think about. All right, and then you had this, this very nice, these, this was a good size plate. This was a, about a 14 inch oval uh, serving platter export made around oh, 1830 to 1850, butterfly pattern. They made these right through the century, though, I have to say. But this was a nice one. It was well done. It went for $153. So uh, certainly certainly a very reasonable buy. Interestingly, Canton and um, export pieces like this have been selling for a lot less than they were 15 years ago, uh, about half. So uh, it's a good time for collectors of export. If you, if you like this stuff, uh, uh, keep an eye on it. Now is the time to buy it. 
Same thing for this Canton platter. This was a, a good size Canton plate. It was about almost 15 inches by the looks of the ruler at the bottom. It was in perfect condition, had no damage. I checked this. And it went for a very reasonable $158. We had it in the newsletter. He's one of our regular sellers. And then there was this. There was a lot. This, this is uh, five pieces of uh, 18th century uh, export porcelain, uh, two different sizes. This one is a, a strainer. Um, and uh, all three of them went for 100, all five of them rather, went for $150. All right, and the plates are roughly uh, eight and a half to nine inches in diameter each. Okay, it was a very good buy. And as I recall, they were all in perfect condition. There was nothing wrong with them other than maybe some minor wear. So some nice Famille Rose could be bought these days. And then there was this, the very good little um, uh, uh, 18th century creamer. Uh, nicely done, very, very good enamels on it. Uh, made her probably around 1775 or so. Went for $197. So there's another example. And then you have this. This is, a, as you know, a, a rose mandarin a scallop leaf shaped dish. They tend to run eight or nine inches in diameter. This was a nice one with a nice scene and figures in the middle sitting by a table. Went for $190. And it was absolutely perfect. There was nothing wrong with it. A good plate, no restoration. And then you have this wonderful, the photography isn't great, but this is a Sung Jarlet, a couple of inches tall, two or three inches tall, nice thick celadon glaze on it. Could be Yuan period. It's in that, the pieces from the Sung to the early Yuan can be very tricky to date. I didn't look at this in person, obviously, but it's a good example, has a nice mouth on it. It went for a pretty reasonable $200. So if you like early celadons, they can certainly be bought for way under $500, as you can see. And then you had this, this export plate, Arms of New York. Uh, very nice example, made for the American market. Um, this is not a repair over, it's just the light. It was, the photography on it was terrible. Um, but it was a nice old plate, uh, made around 1800 and it went for, um, I think it was about $200, $203, according to the note I have here. So there you are. And then you had this lot. You had uh, three good sized vases. They range in size from, uh, as I recall, about uh, uh, this little one here in the middle was about nine inches, and this one was about 14 inches, and all three of them went for $256. They're all antique. Uh, this, the one on the left would be the older of the three. The one on the right would be the latter. Um, and they had minor issues condition-wise, but nothing, um, nothing too significant. I think one of them had a hairline in it. All right. Chinese don't like things with hairlines in them. They have sort of a phobia about it. It's, it's a little bit odd. Um, so if you see something that mentions a hairline or anything, um, the chances are you're going to have a shot at buying it. And uh, you can increase your shot at buying it by putting a bid in right away. Get a bid on things. Um, uh, pieces with minor uh, restoration issues um, um, often don't get a lot of attention. Once there's a bid on, once there's a bid on them, people say, oh, why bother? Um, it's easy to discourage people that way. And then you ha we had this, this wonderful big platter. This is a good sized platter, as you can see by the Coke can in the picture. I wish people would stop using Coke cans and go to something a little more elegant, maybe a, 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 a standard sized wine glass or a nice bottle of wine or something that people can recognize for scale other than Coke cans. I don't know where that came from. It's horrible, but at any rate, it's a nice 18th century uh, platter with a brown dressing rim. Um, good landscape balustrade. This was in the newsletter this past week, and it went for $265. It's a very good buy. That's a remarkable buy, actually. Good looking piece. And then there was this, these uh, pair of uh, beaker vases. They're 19th century, but they have nice decoration on them, the fighting scenes, and around the center are precious objects and bronzes and so forth. These were about eight or nine inches tall. And um, they went for a pretty reasonable uh, $260. So there you have it. And uh, then this, Noya Straits uh, jar. These things have become incredibly popular lately. And, but you can still pick them up. This is a Noya Straits um, uh, hot food pot. And they're notable for these uh, bright enamels, hard enamels they use. And this one only went for $263. And it was in good shape. I took a look at it. Um, so go from there. And then this. This is a seller that we actually follow in Hong Kong. We don't follow any sellers in mainland China. 
for any reason. Um, those of you who are not familiar with it, it's illegal to export antiques out of mainland China. So if you see something listed by a seller from there, um, you know immediately it's a reproduction because they're not allowed to export them. Um, and eBay has tens of thousands of them. But this is a seller in Hong Kong, and they can export antiques. And this is a fellow we keep an eye on. This was a nice 19th, possibly at late 18th century uh, vase. It was not cut down. That's the original shape of it. Uh, I like the shape of this, a nice dark green with a crackle in it. And it went for $269. It measured about uh, nine inches tall. So that was a pretty nice buy if you like monochromes. If you're interested in collecting them, they can be bought. And then you had this, this nice late 19th century with this uh, faux uh, bronze decoration here and up around the collar. They used a dry brown pigment on these, but Famille Rose in the middle and then blue ground at the bottom. A lot of crackle in it. Nice piece, as you can see. It's about twice the height of the Coke can, again with the Coke cans. So it's, it was around probably 11 inches tall. And it went for, um, what did this go for? $280. Pretty reasonable. All right, I like that these, these have the uh, lion masks on the, hand, on the neck as well. And then we have this, this nice late 19th century Famille Vert uh, vase, sort of a mallet-shaped vase. It was drilled, but it was good size. It was about 10 inches tall. Very nice looking vase. I like the figures on it. And $285, all right? And then this, this is a, this is hint porcelain, obviously, but this was a nice root carving or hardwood carving, burl wood with root at the bottom, uh, nice figures. It was fairly good size, and I thought somebody got a great. I like these carvings, and it only went for about uh, two hundred and ninety dollars. Somebody got a great buy on it. And notice the hands are missing up here because the hands were often made of separate materials, and they off very often fall out. So it's not a big problem. Just use it as is. Then this teapot mid 18th century uh, side handle uh, chocolate pot actually is what it is made for export uh, rather nice one and uh, this went for about $265 I'm not sure the lid is original on that but uh, it looked fine and uh, uh, for, for one of these it's very reasonable very reasonable and then you have this this very nice uh, uh, about 8 inch early 18th century uh, shallow bowl with an inverted rim that's shaped, lots of things going on on it. It was in very good shape. As I recall, it had a very slight ha hairline. Here it is. It's got a hairline on the side. And uh, to be honest, what a lot of dealers will do with these is they'll take them and they'll drop them in a bucket of uh, commercial-grade hydrogen peroxide, and that line will evaporate in about a week. And uh, very, very difficult to see. Um, and it cleans it up and makes it quite presentable. And this, thing, this plate only went for $305, which is quite reasonable for these. And then you have this, this good size. This was a nice size um, uh, rose medallion with mandarin scene uh, vase. As you can see by the cup, it looks like it was about probably 14 inches tall. Um, it had a star in the bottom, a star crack in the bottom, which is really common on these pieces. And it only went for $311. That's a nice big vase for 300 bucks. And uh, this one um, went for just a little more than that, 316. Uh, has the uh, shaped, uh, shaped rim at the top and the, and the foo lines coming down the sides with these interesting court scenes. Very nice looking piece, uh, about 12 or 13 inches tall and uh, went for $316. So you're getting the idea. They're, they're, that's sort of the price range for these. And then you had this. This was very nice. This is a Chinese Amari, uh, good-looking teapot with underglaze blue, overglaze enamels. Um, had this lovely little bit of scroll work here under the rim, and uh, went for a very reasonable $329. It had a nick somewhere in the description. Oh, there it is. A little tiny nick on the edge of the spout. This particular seller mentions every possible flaw, uh, so you don't get any surprises. But very reasonable for one of these. This is a nice early example. Uh, probably, you know, it could be Kung Shi period. All right. And then you have this, this uh, uh, Jai Jing uh, bowl, marked bowl. It looks to be of the period. It's not imperial, of course, but uh, the, the, the mark seems to be about right for the uh, decoration, what I'm seeing. But a very attractive bowl. And it went for $300, $335. So it's a good buy, and this is a, these bowls generally are about seven inches in diameter. 
And then you had this, this nice Chinese Amari export bowl with this Ruyi head uh, cartouche on it and the diaper pattern around the underside of the rim, underglaze blue, overglaze red enamels dominate it. It was about eight and a half, eight inches wide, nine inches wide. And it was in good shape, had nothing wrong with it. I checked, didn't have any cracks, no repairs, no fills, nothing. And went for $356. So there's another piece. All right. And then you have these. Uh, uh, Chamberlain Juice, uh, Ju Seller Juice had these. Uh, the pair uh, went for, um, what, I think it was $360 for them. Um, very nice, late 19th century, early 20th century. They, you've, everybody's seen these. They have these piles of inscription around the back if you're an inscription collector. And uh, you get a nice big pair. And actually, these are 16 inches tall. I just remember, they were 16 inches tall for the pair. $365, there you, there's a lot of color, a lot of bang for the buck. And then you have this, this very nice, again, uh, probably Kung Shi period, early 18th century uh, plate with the horse, uh, the, the women, the huntresses, the huntress scene with the rabbit and the little deer. It had a brief hairline someplace on it or something. It was had a minor, minor flaw. I couldn't see it on the front anywhere. And it went for $365. And there was this, this sort of khaki amon decorated 18th century teapot. I thought this was very nice. I liked the decoration. I liked the sparse decoration on this. And uh, it was in good shape. Uh, went for $365. Teapots are a great thing to collect because they come in so many shapes and colors. And uh, there are a lot of teapot collectors out there. And they're reasonably priced. You can pick them up for anywhere from a little over 100 to, you know, very often well under 500, as in this example. And this is a good antique one. And then, then you had this. This was a very attractive small um, uh, export uh, rose mandarin medallion terrine with a gilded uh, mushroom finial on top with the under tray. Uh, it was about eight inches wide. Uh, and it went for. Um, Oh God, what'd this thing go for? Uh, $370 for both pieces. It's actually three pieces, the top, the bottom, and the, and, the, and the tray. So there you are, all right? Very reasonable, and that's a nice one. That's a, this is a seller that we feature often in the newsletter over in, in the Netherlands. He's a, a good fella, and he gets nice things. He's also a potter himself, but he doesn't make these. And uh, this, this was, this is a, those of you that like Kung Shi pieces, this is a very rare type of Kung Shi teapot, highly desirable. And uh, if it had its lid in original spout, these sell in the three to $5,000 range uh, pretty typically, as long as it's in nice shape. But here's a, here was a chance for somebody to get one. Everybody loves the bamboo sort of wrap handle on these. And this, this one only went for $365. So if, you, if you're working on a modest budget and you like, you like the style and you really love the decoration of these old pieces, don't be afraid of buying one that needs a repair or is missing a cover. Buy it for the artwork. That's what you're paying for. All right, and then we had this, this Wan Li uh, late Ming um, uh, deer dish. And I like the rim on this very much. I like the, the outer border. It's quite unusual. And this plate uh, measured about seven and a half, eight inches wide. And it went for $392 and looks to be it was, it was in very, very good shape. This is another seller we follow pretty carefully. He's, a, he's in Asia um, in Japan. And then we have this, this big sort of Noya Straits Famille Rose. This is a very powerfully decorated jar. And it was over 24 inches tall, great big jar. This is a nice big one. A lot of color, quite attractive, deep blue ground. And went for $393 because uh, when I looked into it, it has, a, it has an old hairline or so up in the rim, and one of the tips of one of these has been repaired and uh, that kind of thing. But nothing, nothing devastating, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you expect issues with big pieces. They have a lot of exposure, and they get banged around because of their size. And th this was a nice one. Again, a dealer we know very well that we, we featured this in the newsletter. So somebody got a great buy on this. 24, 25 inches, as I recall. And then you had this. These are cool. Uh, a pair of these sold at Christie's with little lids a few years ago for about $4,000. This is a transitional period, a Chozon period, miniature vase. These are only a couple of inches tall. And somebody picked this one up for $397. They're quite rare. They have flat bottoms, unglazed, 
um, and they're they're not easy to come by, and uh, th but but they do turn up on eBay, you know we we show them when we see them, and then you have this moon flask, a small moon flask, about eight inches as I recall, went for four hundred and seventeen dollars. I like the handles on this; it has nice handles up here, and, and this was in very good shape. It didn't have any repairs or damage. And it's a very lovely scene under the couple under the two women under a willow tree. And somebody is in the sort of moon-shaped window here. Notice a little cracked ice border at the bottom. Nice looking, nice looking uh, little pot for under $500. And then there was this big jar. This was a good sized jar, as you can tell by the, again, with the Coke cans. And um, I'm going to start writing these people letters and tell them to knock off the Coke cans. Yeah. But anyway, this is a good jar, mid-late 19th century example, done in the earlier style with a vase in the center um, on a big, powerful stand being flanked by two, two boys who are trying to move, look like they're trying to move it. Good luck with that. And uh, this went for $400. Nice, nice piece for $400, very attractive. I like the floral sprays. And this, for if you like scholar's objects and monochromes, this was a nice 19th century example uh, with the uh, robin's egg blue and a chimera, and the chimera was not damaged. There's a, it's a black, it has black and white spots. I think a little bit of the enamel might have come off here, but it wasn't broken or anything. And uh, it went for $400, which is quite reasonable. Scholar's objects uh, tend to be very collected, but this was reasonable. And then you had this. The, everybody, a lot of people that collect recognize this palette. It's the late 19th century Femi June um, often associated with the Empress Dowager. She was very fond of this color and with this pattern with this, these black and gris eye sort of um, leaves. And there's a brush pot. And uh, went for a very reasonable price of about $400, a little over $400. All right, and the seller had two up this week, there, that week, as I recall. They were quite similar, so I just picked one of them. And then you have this. Eight, the, the, the seller had this up as Kang Chi. I'm not convinced of that. It might be, but it's definitely 18th century. And it's a little uh, 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 wine jar, or, or he called it a tea caddy. It doesn't look like a tea caddy to me, but at any rate, it's six inches tall. And it went for $440, which is a good buy for one of these. Nice example. Very, very loosely drawn, uh, very often seen in export. And then you have this great big jar. Uh, this was something sold by our friend Josh. Uh, nicely done, like the square sort of Kung Shi style uh, cover on it. It's not a Kung Shi jar, but it's definitely in the manner of, with the cracked ice outer area and this, this lobed uh, center thing with the precious objects and vases and flowers and Buddhist symbols and all kinds of stuff going on it. And this jar was about nine inches tall, and uh, I went for around $450. Very reasonable, nice big piece. And then this, okay, it's a Chin Lung mark. It's not Chin Lung, it's uh, later, but uh, very nicely done with this green, lime green ground and the red uh, phoenixes and the Famille Rose flowers and the rue heads and very typical interior turquoise with a nice high foot. Uh, the mark up here, it does say Chin Lung, um, but with a little tip off on these marks. If you look over here, this, this second mark, if you see that upside down looking V in that box, all right, it should be a straight line. Now, if it was a straight line, it would still wouldn't make this Chin Lung, but that's one of the mistakes they always, they seem to have made when they did Chin Lung marks. And uh, they rarely, if ever, did them in that style uh, in the original period. And then uh, for earlier collectors, again, we have this. This was actually a Ming Celadon that turned up, Southeast Asian Celadon. Uh, very nice with this, with this sort of bamboo turned neck in prunus or apple blossoms uh, in relief, and then in size decoration. It was about eight inches tall, went quite reasonably, $450. It was very heavy looking, nice nice, nice little vase for someone. And then you have this, this is, uh, we're getting down to the last couple. This was a, a rather good Famille Rose Bowl, uh, 19th century, early 19th century, uh, with a good landscape decoration running around it. It was eight inches in diameter, <clears throat> had no repairs, $457. This was also on eBay, and this was something, all the things I've shown you are things that we feature in the newsletter. And then lastly, you have this. This sold for exactly $500.
and this is a fairly rare type of teatop because I decorated uh, mid 18th century circa 17, oh, 1760 to 1775, a little later than mid uh, teapot export generally for the European market. Some of them came here, but it was a nice pot and it had nothing to complain about uh, as far as condition goes. As I recall, it might have had a, some minor fritting on a corner or something, but perfectly nice pot and it went very reasonably for $500. So how can you beat that? So that's it. That'll give you some idea of the kind of things you can buy. Um, nice looking little pot. Uh, you can buy on eBay and uh, if you uh, want to you can get the newsletter notices each week just come to the site and click on there and uh, we'll put you will you'll be added automatically and you'll get these uh, items in your mailbox uh, on Saturday nights long before they close and I would urge you to uh, when you see something don't play games don't put it on a watch list don't think I'll come back later put a bid on it put a bid on it and then eBay will let you know if you've been outbid and you're showing interest, you, won't, you, you avoid the risk of having somebody yank a listing on you. It's very frustrating when that happens. But people will, if they don't think they're getting interest, they will pull pieces these days. Um, it's become more and more common. So put a bid on things and, and get the ball rolling. And uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We put up something every week at least once. And uh, thanks so much. I'm sorry this went a little long. All righty. Have a great week. Bye-bye.